forgot something. Wait, where are my wings? Huh? That's not the kind of wing I was looking for. You guys asked for it, <laughs> I'm gonna deliver. We're doing it again. This time it's DIY Airplane 4. <laughs> So it's another year, we're building another airplane. I didn't really want to do this right away, but because of current world events, I have had nothing to really do in my spare time, so I figured I'm gonna go ahead and build another airplane using some of these parts I got laying around. For those of you who's new to the channel, this is my fourth airplane. We built a slew of other airplanes, and if you want to check out, there's a playlist we'll put somewhere. So you can check that out after you're done watching this specific video because I need that sweet, sweet ad revenue. For those of you who've seen airplane number three, uh, the reason why I'm not actually finishing that, I'm just not revisiting it right now because it doesn't make sense for me. Right now I've actually lost access to a hangar so I have nowhere to put some of my airplanes. So I'm going to be building this new airplane which is designed to be trailerable, six bolts and you take the wings off and you're good to go. It's also going to be a lot lighter, simpler, and throws back to the early days of ultralights which were actually two axis machines. They didn't have ailerons. So we did make the prototype, and the reason why I kind of went to this large scale is I wanted to see how easy it is to put together this airplane. I kind of know it's going to be pretty easy, especially because it's only, you know, three bolts on this side, and I take the whole wing off. So there's just a, a bolt for the strut, two for the wing, the wing struts, I guess. You basically just have a rudder and elevator and a fair amount of dihedral on the wings that help it kind of self-stabilize to make the plane fly very well. But it's fairly low performance, but you really fly in calm evenings, which is the evenings I fly on anyways. Plus, I want to go fly with my paraboter friends, so this would make it very easy to take to the field and for me to set up and fly. So this new airplane has this different mission than my past airplanes. And I really had to make an emphasis on making it cheap and effective. So what I did was made like a hybrid for the fuselage. The rear of the fuselage is made out of poplar wood, which is 15% stronger than spruce, but also about 10% heavier than standard uh, Sitka spruce. Five pounds, five ounces. I'm very happy with that because it's actually lighter than my calculations. Extremely light. And you can beat someone to death with this thing too. Come here, Dave. I think I might have overbuilt this a little bit. Overbuilt is better than underbuilt, especially when it comes to your stabilizers and your elevator and your rudder. Working with the wood is actually super enjoyable and easy. I love how cheap it is, and honestly, it's like my first days of building model airplanes, where you have to glue them out of like balsa wood and super glue. This isn't that much different. You're just using TA epoxy and larger, heavier wood. Almost all the same principles apply, such as like adding gussets to some of the parts that need to be strengthened and copious amounts of glue. The adhesives I'm using is T88 epoxy. That's widely accepted in the aircraft community for constructing airplanes, so that stuff should be great to hold it together. The front of the airplane is actually made of chromoly steel 4130, which from looking at some crash photos of like other airplanes that have had accidents, the chromoly cockpit section seems to survive like smashes up very well and the pilots can usually get out with some injuries. Unfortunately with wood, the yield strength is very close to the ultimate strength, which I've seen a lot of ultralights built out of. So in case I crash this thing, because I like to fly low and slow and a big emphasis on low. I can probably see a dead stick landing or something bad happening in the future. So probably make the front end enough steel because it can take a lot of strength there. And the tail, I don't really care about what happens to that in a crash because it's, it's behind me. Plus it's lightweight and cheap. So we saved a bunch of money going that route, building them just the way they are. We hold the fuselage strength test. Not that this is very necessary at all, because there's never, ever, ever be this much pressure on the uh, aft section slash empennage. Not in any configuration this plane will ever see in flight. So we good. Welding the airplane is very easy this time around. I'm still pretty much a novice as, as far as TIG welding goes, but I've definitely made a lot less holes in this airplane than the last one. The notching still sucked, but I got through it much faster than I did the first time. It honestly took me probably about a week to finish up all the welding from start to finish. The funny thing is I tacked together the fuselage in like a day, but the finish welding and stuff, it just took such a long time because welding itself is just really tedious when you're doing TIG welding. This is also a sample of the upcoming wing. It's actually going to be 100% on a foam board and some aluminum. I'm just kidding, that's a horrible idea, don't do that. This is actually just a jig, it was kind of funny. I made this whole jig just so I could just tack weld these parts in their respective areas because it needs to be dead on and exact. And this is the easiest way to do it, by building a mock-up section of the actual wing. 
So that's a lot of work for nothing. <laughs> So I've been chipping away at the build for the last couple of months. Obviously the fuselage started first in the rear empennage section because that was just wood and there's something I could easily just do. The front is chromoly and from my experience working with it on my last airplane, I've had a lot more experience, if you want to call it that, at putting these things together. So it went together much faster this time and I was much more satisfied with the results. So the olive weight of just the bare fuselage, uh, meaning the front cockpit section and the empennage and the tail feathers was about 50 pounds, which is very lightweight. I actually did a lot more analysis on the design, specifically looking at Poplar than adding in Diffusion when I made these parts because I really didn't want to overbuild this airplane like I kept doing on my other airplanes. So it's on target so far. The next thing we did was add the engine. It was the paramotor engine from my last plane. It, the last plane ended up being just a little bit too heavy for that specific motor, so it wasn't going to fly anyway, so I might as well just take this engine off and then use it on this airplane. Really not that bad. The one challenge we're going to run into with this specific design is paramotor engines are designed to push air, and they usually have a propeller designed to do that. Now, I'm actually going to be pulling air, so I have to buy a reverse left-hand propeller, and then bolt it to the front. Now, I think it should be fine looking at the drawings of this motor, considering the thrust bearings look a certain way. So I think tugging on it will be fine, but we ultimately don't know how long that will last. I really have to pay attention for my hours of early flight time on this to really pay attention to make sure the engine doesn't go launching the propeller assembly off of it. Because I really don't know if it's designed for that way. I really haven't gotten any feedback from Vitarazzi about it. They don't know either, so it's up to me to really experiment. But hey, we like to experiment. That's what we like to do. Just as long as the prop doesn't go through my car or something. Or, or a stranger standing by. <laughs> So here's what we got so far. This is pretty much the completed fuselage of the airplane. I actually even got around to decorating it a little bit. But well, now we've done a little bit of screwing around as you with the taxi testing, but unfortunately it still hasn't flown because there are obviously no wings. I say the wings for last because I don't know why. It looks good, I'm happy with it. The only thing I haven't really quite finished yet was the instrument panel, but I'm saving that for last because I generally like to do the instrument panel last because it's like my favorite thing to kind of put all the little details into. But for the most part, the airplane is ready for wings and is ready for its maiden flight which will hopefully be really soon in the next video. Now I've actually done a lot of flight testing on this one-third skill model. A lot of flight testing, actually. We set this thing up on the water and took it out on the boat and chased it around the entire lake to get you some of the sick footage you're about to see. So the goal is we're gonna fly the plane, but we need to catch it too, because it doesn't have floats on it. And we're around a lot of water and there's no runway. I guess we'll see how that goes. For calm evenings and smooth winds, you really can't beat something simple just like a three-channel airplane. early days of model aviation, some of my favorite airplanes were simple three-channel models. With only rudder, elevator, and throttle controls, they flew great. I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna try to touch the wheel.
Pretty good. Pretty good. That was crazy. All right, I guess that works. Uh, you know, I think I saw this somewhere. I think the uh, Navy did something with like a with a J4 or something. Or no, it's an L4 grasshopper. I don't know. We'll put the video somewhere. But that works pretty good. The plane didn't get wet. That was awesome. Heavy. We did it again. Another year, another airplane. Now, this one is much, much better on track to be a better airplane than the last three I put together. So hopefully it stays that way. The alt weight of the airplane right now is 104 pounds with the engine, the landing gear, the tail feathers, and the finished surfaces. So I'm very, very happy with that. Hopefully the wings are only another 50 pounds for both panels and struts that go with them. For all of you that keep asking for plans, I really cannot release plans for any of my airplanes because they're so like unfinished and I really do so many undocumented design changes. So please stop asking. Not till the stuff is thoroughly tested and I have an engineer look over this will I ever feel comfortable about releasing airplane plans. We are hopefully getting ready to get this thing done by the next month. Thanks for watching. Check out the playlist of the uh, other airplane builds and stuff. That That's basically it. Got no wings yet. Huh? And with that, we trailered it back home to fly another day. <laughs>